<laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here and for those that spoke before me. Um, quite an interesting session that uh, tech jury and all. So once again, my name is Kingsley Bandiok, and I'm a user experience designer and open source design advocate. So I'm going to be talking today about open source design for sustainable development. So let's jump right in. So yeah, currently Africa actually grapples with um, unprecedented challenges, a lot of issues that we are pretty much aware of, you know, ranging from you know educational inequalities, health sector, infrastructural challenges, and all that. So my talk is going to focus on is doing a spotlight on how we can use open source, we can leverage open source design as a tool, right, to improve our, our lives right in Africa just beyond, you know, lines of codes and all. So first I'm going to start talking about telling us what open source is. So open source refers to a type of software or project where source code is made freely available and may be duplicated, modified, and redistributed. Now, emphasis is actually on the word duplicated, modified, and redistributed. So, so yeah, I added actually an example that the speaker's design template was made open source. So because I know I was able to dupl duplicate, David was able to duplicate, um, Ted Jury was able to duplicate, of course, and modify that into a uh, respective you know, presentation. So whenever you create a project, you know, beyond the lines, lines of codes and all that, be it coding, be it uh, Tedgeri talked about documentation. So you create a document and then it's up there in the cloud and everyone in the committee or everyone on your team um, can have access to the document, can duplicate the document, can modify the document. Now, redistribution, for example, I'm actually making a presentation here. So this is kind of like redistribution. So because I have the right to do that. So but when you create an open source project, when you create a software, you know, now the lines of code, for example, because open source is like open, you've made the, the source code, right? You know, open for, to the public, unlike proprietary software where you have closed source like Microsoft and, and the likes of them. So if you try getting the um, code lines of code, that's almost like hacking. You don't have that right. So now redistribution for you to reuse, you know, a, a, a software code, a code base, and all that. You need licensing. That that's also where um, open source licenses come come into play. I'm not here to talk about that. So, but also as designers, we are very much familiar on Figma, where you have access to where you have access to, you know, design files, UI kit and all that that is made public. I think most recently you have to, there are also some other um, assets on Figma. You have to create a certain token, right, to be able to duplicate and use it. So the overall idea here is that um, when you create a project and that project is accessible for others to make use of the raw file, even if you created the project with Photoshop, um, Illustrator, in design and countless of other tools, you know, designers use to achieve whatever design um, goal they seek out to achieve. So whenever you make the design file accessible and editable to your community or to the public, that automatically become open source. Then I also want to state here clearly that open source is different from, open source software is different from freeware. So a software can be free, but it's not open source. For example, you have Blender, um, I already talked about AR, right? And I believe maybe some of the tools you most likely be playing with sometimes is AR or is Blender. So Blender is open source, right? It's free or it's freeware. I don't know for now, I, like I haven't confirmed if it's open source, but open source simply means that your source code, the source file, what exactly makes that software what it is, is accessible under a certain code of conduct or licenses to the general public to duplicate and modify. So this is actually very important. So, but my focus is really going to be how designers can play around this and use it, you know, as a tool, can liberate this as a tool for social impact. So now that we've understood what open source is, right, um, 
So what are the sustainable sustainability challenges we'll be looking forward to leveraging open source to solve? So now, of course, there are a handful of sustainability issues, right, in Africa, ranging from climate change, you know, data deficiency, healthcare education, you know, and a lot of them, but I'm just going to be focusing on this, this three for time constraints. So um, I'll pick the first one, data deficiency. Now, what's the, what's the role of open source in these three key things, right? How can open source design be used, right, in this different category? Now, data deficiency. Um, last year, I contributed to a project called Good Stock, and it was quite an amazing and interesting project because uh, um, part of my role in the project was to um, walk around a user-friendly, you know, flow of data for stakeholders and everyone that was involved in the project. Now, what Gustav actually seek out to achieve, it's actually there, you can look it up. So what Gustav, you know, you know seek to achieve is creating um, building blocks, right, for government institutions, right? So you have the educational, you have in a case where, for example, in Nigeria, I'm going to use Nigeria as a case study, where um, if you want to, for those of us, this is not trying to be insensitive to any other person joining in from other um, countries, but I just want to use Nigeria as a case study. So bear with me. So for example, I know a couple of years back, I went out to, I got my name. Name is national identification number, a special number assigned by the federal government to every citizen. So a couple of years back, I got my name and, um, now, I, I went back, I think, years after that to get my international passport. And then um, almost like the same information I supplied when I went to register for my name, it's the same set of you know, data I had to provide during international passport. And, and then um, that's just for me. And the issue now was that, unfortunately, some of, there was just some kind of disparity in the information I shared, right? And then um, what happened? That actually cost me some money because uh, uh, when I went back, I think that was just about when the immigration office and were trying to merge data. And then the issue now was that um, a certain information supply was flagged, right? But that was sorted. So how about a situation where that would have been avoided? Now, consider you know, uh, a pregnant woman, right? going through the same experience and then you have primary healthcare system where she also has to supply data. So we have a lot of people in Nigeria with multiple personalities, not because they choose to go about that way, but the data represent them as two separate human beings because we don't have um, a clean data infrastructure currently in this country. So Data deficiency hampers information decision making, hindering progress in addressing critical issues, insufficient and unreliable data, impedes sustainable development effort on the continent. So we the um, we are in a continent where data is really an issue, right? And um, oftentimes um, uh, our, our governments, right, policymakers, right, make decisions that are not backed by data. And this is actually a huge challenge that is also impeding development, you know, in Africa. So, of course, I just talked about Booster, a project I contributed to. So our goal as design, our goal could involve designing an open source data collect, uh, collection and management system like Booster is doing. So open source community in an interesting, uh, okay, Booster is an open source community. I talked about that. So. Our goal as designers could be, you know, designing systems, right? And by designing, I'm not necessarily implying, you know, pushing pixels around. Well, I design it, uh, there's a whole lot involved, right? So end-to-end -end thinking, right? Innovating, you know, coming up with, you know, researching like um, part of what Ted really talked about, getting this feedback and trying to develop system, right? Being in the room where these policies, you know, are being developed, understand. And um, 
also actually creating systems to collect data and open sources, right, where citizens most likely can be rewarded, you know, for supplying this data and um, see how we can open source this data and government institutions can leverage, can have access to this data, you know, and use it for a whole lot. For example, even as designers, right, you're working on a project and um, you want access to Kudos to Kimoyo Insight, and um, I listened to Nam Namsu a couple of days back talk about the beautiful work Kimoyo is doing about user research. So sometimes getting access to real data is really a challenge in Africa, right? And at the end of the day, this is actually um, a solution we can bring to the fore because as designers, as UX researchers, as UX designers, this is actually what we do. Uh, in a day-to-day -day job. So how about bring that into open source? How about create something around that in open source? So um, I'm just going to jump over to the next one. Healthcare system. So a lot of inequality around health in Africa. So most African countries battles with challenges due to limited access, infrastructure, and access to healthcare resources, right? So one of the project, example of a project working on something around this, right, is Open MRS. Uh, it's an open source project addressing healthcare data management and similar issues in this sector. So th there are tons of inequality. I can't really specifically look at these issues, right, across the different countries in the African continent, right? But then if you zero in on in Nigeria, right, a lot of issues that can be addressed, right, from booking and everything. Most of the tools we have around this sometimes are proprietary software, you know, you know, citizens or individuals have to jump in. But one critical thing we also have to understand is that open source is actually that tool that can actually help us drive our society, right? And not having to totally rely on the government system, right? To create these platforms for us, right? So emphasis is just around the fact that um, you know, as non-code contributors, non by non-code contributors, I mean being a part of open source, right? And then not having to write code as designers, um, you know, you know, documenting as Tejiri talked about, we can actually focus on using our skill, right? To drive sectors like this, right? To create systems, right? That drive, you know, help support our health system, health infrastructure, right? Could be through data and all that, you know, like I did mention, you know, and um, we talked about, um, you know, decision making. We have um, our policy makers, right, to make decisions in health sector. How are they able to make a uh, decision that are backed by data, right? You know, how are they able to make decisions that influence, how do they decide on this is a particular community that should get a primary healthcare infrastructure and the people around that are going to benefit from that? Sometimes it's just because maybe a certain policy maker is from a certain region and decide to reward his region with a, in a primary healthcare decision. But then if this particular decision is backed by, you know, data or the collective healthcare, you know, information of the people around that region, I think better decision can be made to implement that. So this is actually where open source, right, design can come in. This is where open source can come in. This is where designers can come in. Um, so the third point here is education. And um, it's really interesting to see um, how even, of course, India, you know, China, right, are actually, you know, doing a whole lot around this sector, right? Um, in the recently published um, blog post of, uh, by Kito, right, you know, there have been a lot of interesting statistics, right? An interesting project that is being done, open source project that is being done by Indians, right? You know, and I think this is actually um, an interesting, uh, you know, sector, an interesting area, right? Where open source can really, open source design can really influence. So Africa confronts sustainability challenges with issues like limited access, inadequate infrastructure and resources, disparities and all that. Um, a lot of persons in Africa are still not educated, you know, you know, access to education and some persons can afford the formal education system that we have, either too expensive for them and all that. So now 
one of the things um, um, people first the org in India is doing is um, they've been able to create an open source learning management system that lets you run a, a synchronous online school where learning is achieved through focus starts, directed feedback, and iterative workflow and community interaction. So um, it makes learning easy. It makes um, anybody can have access to uh, some form of education and all that. So this is what we can start looking at because um, why I actually choose this topic specifically is the fact that when you talk about open source and when you look at open source, right, in Africa at the moment, um, the very moment you talk about open source, like most persons, most like it feel, feel like it's a lot more technical, right? And um, nothing can be done that, you know, connects the people that is relatable, you know, individuals can get, we all can get involved. And I also have to, you know, say this, rightly, you know, for if you've been thinking that way, that anybody at all, anybody can contribute to open source. Anybody can be a part of open source, right? And um, as long as it's driven with the goal of, um, you know, creating, it could be accessible products, right, for the use of the general public, right? And of course, um, tech today as it is, open source is actually a key driver of the tech ecosystem. You know, talking about operating system that most of our devices are running on, it's been driven, it's just because of open source. So I don't really see a society that can thrive or um, uh, it could be um, a project and a sustainable tech ecosystem. So even when you talk about sustainability in tech generally, you know, open source has a key role to play. So the future of tech, the future of AI, you know, the future of AI. Um, interestingly, that um, David talked about AI and even in the areas of education. So how about to create an open source, you know, project, you know, around this sector. So if you're waiting for the government, most likely you wouldn't see government take proactive steps, right, to do this. Thankfully for, you know, the current minister of uh, education, uh, information and communication in Nigeria, taking giant steps in this area, you know. But then, you know, if as designers, we can champion conversations like this, we can create products like this with direct impact and open source it, I feel like it would be a key driver to, you know, sectors like education. Thumbs up to what Kenya is doing, and I'm going to share some of that in my next uh, slide. So examples and benefits of, uh, and benefits of open source. Um, sustainable open source. So submit in Africa open source projects for like by GitHub, right? Um, there are recent October report. So this might not be very legible, but then we have uh, this project open to a freely accessible database of information by for KNs, right? I, I just talked about what is happening in Kenya. A lot of amazing and you know great open source projects. A toolkit of uh, you have go to vote. A toolkit of simple web and SMS service that help citizens to get ballot box informed and ready to vote. You know, we've had a uh, election crisis in Africa. We've had serious issues like I, I talked about climate change and a whole lot. This is what, you know, as techies, not just about, you know, the pushing pictures around our day-to-day -day job, you know, but creating systems, creating products that directly impact, you know, our society and being a part of that because we are designers. We are so much more than, you know, the rectangles, the frames and all that. We are actually designed to create much more impact. Um, so another very good example I want to spotlight is mapping Makoko open source project in Lagos, Nigeria. So for those of us that are quite familiar with um, Lagos, right, in, in Nigeria, so of course we know the Makoko community, more like, you know, people you know, living on water and everything. And um, for like a good number of years, that was like a dark spot on the map. Right. Well, a group of guys, you know, Code for Africa in partnership with Fortalisa Center on Crisis Reporting and Humanitarian Open Street Map uh, team, enable a team of volunteers to exactly map Makoko community. Right. That's what I believe uh, you can look this up. The information is out there. You know, you can check it out. So this is actually an example of a project, right, that has a direct influence, right, on people, on citizens and all that. So these are the kind of projects as designers, we can also lead the conversation. Why particularly designers? Why would designers want to lead the conversation? Why would designers want to get involved? Because 
most times in most cases we have this direct connection with the users we are the ones that empathize more with the users we understand the users right we understand what sometimes maybe the business model in the company you're working with may not necessarily allow you to implement some of maybe the user feedback and all that you've gotten but then open source could be a place to unburden you know the burden you've acquired by virtue of talking to to end users and using this information to create products or projects that directly impact you know our ecosystem and of course by extension you know a sustainable society in africa so what are the benefits? I talked about, you know, some of the benefit examples. So what are the benefits of getting involved? So global impact. So sustainable open source projects have the potential to make a positive impact on a global scale, addressing challenges in diverse fields, as mentioned earlier. So accessibility, open source makes technology solutions accessible to a broader audience, reducing the barrier of promoting inclusivity. I stumbled on an open source project, you know, um, it talks about maintaining a certain language in Africa. You know, sometimes in some of our communities, some of our languages are going extinct and all that because of civilization, you know. And also, there are also some people creating projects about uh, around this accessibility in technology and all that, you know. So cost effectiveness. So open source projects often reduce costs associated with software development as the community shares the burden of creating maintaining roles that tons of uh, uh, organizations out there, you know, sponsoring open source projects as long as it's driven towards impacting or as long as it's for the greater good, right? That tons of, you know, um, uh, communities, projects out there, uh, companies out there sponsoring, you know, um, open source projects so longevity right open source projects can have a longer life cycle as are not dependent on a single organization and ensuring continued support and development even if for one even when one contributor leaves right so longevity you know the project that's also one exciting thing about uh, working on open source project it's not about you right the project goes beyond and you're impacting people it's cost effective accessible as mentioned and you know, so conclusion, um, so in conclusion, the marriage of open source, right, design and sustainable development goals emerge promise for better Africa. As designers, we possess a unique understanding of end users making us catalysts for change. So let's drive conversations as designers and contribute our creative progress, right, to shape solutions that truly make a lasting impact. The journey towards sustainability begins with us as designers as we chat a course, right, for a more inclusive, innovative, and sustainable world through open source collaboration. So we have uh, a role to play here, and we have uh, so much we can accomplish. So come join me, right, in creating a more sustainable um, um, uh, Africa, right, um, a more sustainable design ecosystem and tech ecosystem, and by extension, you know, making a global impact. So thank you so much. And um, if you have questions, I think, you know, this is the time uh, to ask, and I'm more, more willing to also answer your questions. I also have a couple of um, articles, right, I've written around open source, right? So if you're also interested in, you know, contributing and you don't know how to start, right? And questions like, can designers also contribute to open source using GitHub? I have a couple of uh, articles that address that on Medium, which I'll share the link shortly. So you can ask your questions, please. I see um, a question here from Clotilda says, uh, do designers have to code to understand or use open source? Open source? Um, so not at all. So you don't have to be, you don't have to code, you don't have to write lines of code to be able to contribute to open source projects, right? Um, I, I say just like, of course you work with your company and then, um, and then you actually design for your company as a designer, right? You know, you can bring your skill into design. Currently, I serve as a design maintainer at Chaos Africa, where I actually help and oversee like a couple of designers, right? Contribute to open source projects. So these are projects and I've been contributing for a while now. So for example, some of the open source projects you encounter there, you know, with work, you know, user experience, you can bring your skill to play. Now, a very good application of what Tejiri talked about, you know, is that when I joined Chaos Africa, of course, um, 
there were tons of you know like people on the project already right and then um but then i had difficulty contributing to the project i think i spent a month or, or two you know trying to figure out the project and it was a bit challenging for me so one of the things i did eventually when i was able to get the whole of what the project was about was to create a documentation and open source it right for other members of the community so how i understood the project what the project was about i left it all out on the document so what this actually did was that it made the onboarding experience easy for a lot of other persons right that joined the project so it made the, the, the um, it, made, it made it easy for every other person to understand what the project was about, right? And made it easy for them to contribute. So as a designer, good in documentation, these are skills you can bring in. You can conduct user research for your project and all that. So you can contribute without having to recognize it. So I don't know if I answered that question. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, there's another question from Chini Melum. Um, he or she is asking how can he or she start his or her open source journey well okay starting okay so the, i okay sorry you can go ahead talk by sorry yes i mean i knew you already talked on you already touched on that but can you do that again okay so to start your open source journey some of like five about five steps you have to take so first of all you have to research if you you know research about the project more like you have to take do some background checks about the project for example if i'm not good in AL, like david ajay is i wouldn't look for an open source project that is into air and start contributing if air is not my thing if web3 is not my thing i wouldn't be looking for a blockchain project to contribute to so that's why they will like their own research. So even if I recommend a project now for you, does it resonate with your skill set as a designer? So what you want to do is probably spend time researching, getting to understand, know about the project for us is very important. So when you know about the project, um, you can only solve a problem you understand, right, as a designer. So when you know about the project, you're excited about the project, now you can actually see ways to improve the project. I can't come to your house and try to solve problems for you because you understand the issues in your house better than I do. So, so it's only a problem you understand. So that's why you have to spend time researching, right, as a designer. So when you see a project you're interested in, you can bring any of your design skill, right? You don't necessarily have to be the one designing. You can come up to user research. You don't necessarily have to be the one doing user research. If there are projects already, even if the project is live, because most times designers join a project and then they'll be like, there's a design already, there's a logo already, there's a flyer, so what do I do? You can conduct visibility tests on the open source project, get insight, and then iterate on this feedback you've gotten, discuss with the dev team and all that, improve the usability for the project and the community. So it, it doesn't start and end with pushing pixels around. There's so much more. So discover the project and then um, get to contribute. You can reach out to me. You can connect with me. Maybe I can share a little more, actually, that can help you get started. Okay. Yeah. So um, there's a question here. I think, I think that's the last one. How does designers um, use this open source to come up with design solution? That's from goodness. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, goodness, for asking that question. So um, designers can actually, um, for example, um, is it a project you want to work on? Um, uh, is, is it some? Is there anything you're passionate about? For example, I have a friend that is working on an educational product, and his intention is to open source it, right, for secondary school pupils and all that. So, is there a solution you're passionate about? Is it a project you're passionate about, and everything? So, how do you now make it open source, right? How do you now create this product? How do you now create the solution and open source it to your community, right? So. Anything at all you're passionate about, be it in education, be it in healthcare, right? It could even be in fintech, like a lot of persons, you know, into fintech and all that. Is there a solution you feel like you can create, right? It's not like, um, it's just about anything at all, right? And then you now decide to, or you've been having challenges, right, as a designer, right, about a certain tool. For example, a very good example is here in Africa, most times you have issues, right, creating um getting african-centric assets 
for design. So you can create something around that and open source it for African designers, right? So that's just an example of, you know, the solution you can come up with. In our so you can connect with me on Twitter, right? As um, uh, I am Kingsley on Twitter is my handle, right? And then um, on um, I am Kingsley is my handle on Twitter, on Instagram, I share a whole lot there. And also on LinkedIn, right? As Kingsley Brandy or, or as I am Kingsley, you can connect with me. So thank you everyone for the time. Thank you so much. And I'm so excited, you know, to be featured here to speak and also, you know. Thank you very much, Kingsley. Thank you.